So I'm here with Luke, the head Make Music Your Life uh, coach, to talk about the third stage of the automatic music machine system called Draft. Hey, Luke. How you doing, Mike? I'm good. So, Draft, what's it all about? It's really the part where you are building upon, you're building a track where you actually have a vision for what the track is, right? So before you get to draft, you might be experimenting with what the track could be. And draft, before you get to draft, it's almost like if you're about to build a building, you have the blueprint ready, right? And before you go in with the blueprint, you might have tested out some walls, you might have thought about different uh, ways that this building could look, different ways that it could work, um, done some experimenting. But then once you actually finalize that blueprint of what the track will be, that's when you put it into draft within the automatic music machine. And that's when you actually start building the blueprint that you've come up with. So in a sense, there's two halves of the machine. There's splurge and discover where where it's the divergent part of the creative process where we're coming up with new ideas more options finding out what the music could be and in a previous video with uh, Joni we talked about why discover is so important particularly if you want to be uh, an artist because a lot of people just miss out discover and already know what it is but once you through your experiments and the fun that you've had and the trying uh, different things, you've you've come up, oh, I know what this music could express. I know what it it could be. It's like you have, as you say, and I, I mean, often it will be an idea in your mind or it might be various different uh, lists that you've made, you know, uh, notes that you've uh, uh, made. Uh, you know what the purpose of the track is. You know and sometimes have some of the elements of it it's not that you don't have anything you don't do it all in your head so you have the you have the, the blueprint so that in your head you know it, it in words and also partially in the actual music because obviously through the process of discover you may well have a track of uh, some form uh, already there uh, there isn't a you know specific thing. You know, there isn't a specific point at which you go right now. I'm in draft, which is kind of uh, in the uh, music, and then once you know what this thing is going to be, you make your first draft. So literally in draft, you are drafting. So why is that? Why is it useful to think of? these stages of the creative process like this to so why is it useful why is it helpful for you to know that you are in draft rather than in discover or or, or, or any of the other stages i think a lot of people don't ever separate the discover and the draft so they kind of work against themselves and they'll start going off in all different sorts of directions when they're actually in the drafting phase so when you're in the drafting phase, really what you want to be doing is getting that particular vision that you have of the track done as quickly as possible. Because what happens with the automatic music machine is if that vision doesn't work out, you can always bring it back, right? But what a lot of people do is they, they have a vision and they kind of get it going, but they put the brakes on and either try basically unconsciously go into discover again or cut the knees out of the idea or never define the idea at all and just kind of go frivolously without any sort of map. And that ends up causing them to spend six months on a track and never release Which is anything. always changing into another track. <laughs> it's like, it's right. like this never ending, like, well, you know, three months ago it was a completely different track and then three months before that was a completely different track. You know? And the other, uh, the other uh, benefit of uh, doing this is if you ever struggled to arrange things, okay, that actually having a, I mean, draft, draft isn't just about arrangement. It's not as prescriptive as that. You know, the, the directions in the machine aren't as, right now you're in draft, you can only arrange. But what 
tends to happen in draft is that you do a fair amount of laying things out, shall we say. Um, and, you know, making, you know, you're thinking about things like, is there a payoff? I mean, why don't we explain what, what's a payoff, Luke? When we talk about a payoff in, uh, when we're, uh, that's one of the questions that you have to answer. Is there a payoff? I mean, what is a payoff in a piece of music? Uh, I mean, if you thought of it like a, like a story, it's the, it's the climax, it's the peak, it's the moment where all of the tension is released. It's where the musical argument justifies itself. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a that's a very academic way, I guess, of saying that. Um, it's the moment where your hand, if you know, if it's a club track, it's the moment where your hands are in the air and you're like, "Yes, this is it. This is what I was waiting for." Yeah, often, um, often in a club track, the the uh, the payoff is the drop. Yeah, when when mm -hmm. the the rhythm. Well, not all club tracks, but you know, certainly big room ones where the where the rhythm comes back and everyone just goes nuts. Yeah, that 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 in a in a pop in a, a piece of pop music, often not always, the uh, payoff is the final chorus. Um, mm -hmm. It's like where it all makes sense. The the moment at which the most tension is released, usually, um, where people go, oh, okay, so that that's where this has all been um, going. So that's one of the things that you figure out both in your head but also in the music in draft i mean really that's one of the first things you need to do because once you know where you're going often everything else writes itself because when you know that you are drafting and you know what you're supposed to be doing that is actually a different kind of mental state or process or way of thinking than if you're just trying stuff and by separating these i hesitate to call them mindsets because often when people talk about mindset you think about like tony robbins and things like that <laughs> but but, but it, it's like it, it's more than that it's a creative mindset it's an approach it's a way of thinking a way of being and again it doesn't mean that in draft you don't ever try anything new because you can't you know the automatic music machine uh, allows that you can do some discovery as we call it in draft because that's kind of what happens but it's in service of reaching this specific goal which is to have a draft where there's a piece of music which has a shape that leads to a payoff you know it has certain sections and it leads to some kind of uh, a payoff so in terms of your own music Luke, because you know when when you first you know when I first started coaching you first started doing stuff with me. I mean, I hadn't defined all of you know all of these uh, things um, uh, uh, back then. So you've actually kind of been there while the automatic music machine has been de developed, and you've been implementing these things over time. I mean, what's the difference for you in terms of writing music that having this? Okay, so now I'm drafting. What kind of difference has it made to your creative uh, process and also to the quality of your music? Oh, I think it makes it a lot quicker because once you decide what you want it to be, it's almost like I can write out on a sheet of paper what I want the track to be and where to put everything. And then I just put it, right? And I'm not asking, is it good? Or do I need to try something different? I'm just trying to get that thing out, right? And a lot of times when you just do that and you get the full thing, the full vision out, you don't end up needing to try anything because it actually works. Whereas a lot of people, they they just make some random thing and they start tweaking and changing and asking and wondering. And then they're like, oh, well, it could be this. And they start going in that direction. But then this huge amount of crippling self-doubt comes in or or they start questioning it. And then they're basically going back to discover instead of just moving forward and getting the actual vision out. Because a lot of times when the vision's out, it's like everything falls into place and it just works. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to write much quicker and it allows you to, when you're writing, have a lot less pressure on you. Because you know you can always go back to discover if you need to, right? Yeah, exactly. And also, the, the other thing, I mean, this points to another thing about the automatic music machine, which isn't specific to dra draft, it's just specific to the system, which is that 
when we are actually making the music, I literally, when we are in the studio, let's call it, even if you don't have a, you know, even if you're in your bedroom right, or in your kitchen or something, but let's call it in the studio. Yeah. When you're actually making the music, we don't judge what we're doing. We just do. We just create. We just let, and because we leave that judgment at the studio door. Yeah. Or at the door door. <laughs> If you're using a door. Yeah. So, so you, you just leave that and you, you, you just, you do what you have decided to do beforehand. This takes an enormous amount of pressure off your process as well. You just, okay. So this is what the piece of music is going to, you know, this is what I think it's going to be. It's it going to lead to this, right? You make those decisions outside of the process from listening, which is actually when you're much more objective, right? Because when you're in it, it just is very different. And then you do it as far as much as possible without judgment. So you just lay out the thing, right? This is what I've decided to do. I'm just going to do it. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. I mean, how much quicker? How much? How much less painful does that make it? If you don't, if it doesn't have to be good, right? So then you lay the thing out. You export it. You don't worry about it. And then at another time, you come back to it and you listen to what you've done, and you get a completely different perspective than when you were doing it. If you've ever had that experience of being in a session, doing a bit, go, oh, this is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and then coming back to it the next day and going, this is terrible. What was I thinking? All the opposite way around, thinking that it was terrible and coming back thinking, actually, this is quite good. You will know for a fact, you will have it, it like displayed to you in your experience often that your opinion in the moment of creation is often is highly unreliable. So this is what the automatic music machine allows you to do it actually systematizes this right you just do it don't worry about it and then you can come back to it listen to it and then decide what to do outside of the process so really in draft you can still let go you know you can still let go of it needing to be great in any given moment while you're working on it because that actually allows it to be much better because you're not second guessing yourself um, and it also makes arranging, I mean, I, I used to have this big barrier to arrangement. <laughs> like, oh, no. oh, no, I suppose it's time to arrange now. And then it wouldn't work. And so then I'd go back. That just is no lot. I mean, it, it just doesn't exist anymore. That, that, there is no barrier um, whatsoever because you're not really thinking about arrangement in, in that way. So, you know... To take from this, I think the most the most important thing you can uh, take uh, from this is understand the difference between the divergent part of the creative process, which is splurge and discover, and the difference in approach between that and the convergent part of the creative process, where you actually have an idea that you are working towards, which is about removing options. It's about actually zeroing in on uh, a goal because trying to do both of those things at the same time which is what a lot of people do trying to come up with ideas and edit those ideas at exactly the same time is like putting your foot on the brake and the accelerator yeah. at the same time i mean if you do that in a car what do you end up doing you end up going around in circles in other words looping which might yeah. sound familiar